When founding our monastic community, our founder entrusted to us a particular intention, to pray that all may come to knowledge of the one true God. For this reason, we have St. Edith Stein, a Carmelite nun of Jewish roots, as our patron. She gave her life as a holocaust for her people. She was born October 12, 1891, the eleventh child of her family. Her birth date always had special significance for her, as she was born on the Jewish feast of the Day of Atonement, the day when the High Priest would enter the Holy of Holies and offer the sacrifice of atonement for himself and the whole nation. Little did she know the significance of this feast would characterize her own life, a life of atonement as a Carmelite and in her form of martyrdom for the Jewish people. She was raised by her mother, her father having died when she was only two. However, she did not grasp her mother's Jewish faith. She decided to become atheist during her teenage years. She herself admits that while she was an overly zealous student, in the seventh grade she slackened a bit in her schoolwork because she had begun to take an interest in the deeper questions of life. She was not satisfied interiorly, and had an instinct there was something more to life. It was during this time that she decided to stop praying. She began a deep interior struggle. In her own words, she was seeking clarity, but without knowing it, perhaps, she was seeking God. She went on to study philosophy under Edmund Husserl, first at Göttingen University, then at Freiburg after World War I. She was brilliant and well-respected in this field, becoming a teaching assistant and pursuing a doctorate. During this time, she had learned to stand in awe of believers and questions of faith. She recounts an example of this. It occurred at the Frankfurt Cathedral, where she saw a woman with a shopping basket enter the church and kneel for a brief prayer. She wrote, This was something totally new to me. In the synagogues and Protestant churches I had visited, people simply went to the services. Here, however, I saw someone coming straight from the busy marketplace into this empty church, as if she was going to have an intimate conversation. It was something I never forgot. God was drawing her along, slowly revealing the truth of his existence to her. But it was not until she faced the ultimate question of suffering and death that she finally gained a glimpse at the glory of the cross and the truth of the Christian faith. She herself describes this moment. The year was 1917. Adolf Reinach's death in the war and his wife's attitude to it were my first encounter with the cross and the divine power it imparts to those who bear it. For the first time I saw the tangible victory of the Church, born of her Savior's sufferings over the sting of death. It was the first time that my unbelief collapsed, that Judaism paled, and that Christ began to radiate. Christ in the mystery of the cross. Continuing her quest for truth, she began to read the New Testament of the Bible and study Catholic authors. One summer evening in 1921, God's providence put the autobiography of St. Teresa of Avila in Edith's hands. She read this book all night, and when she had finished, she said to herself, This is the truth. She asked to be baptized, and on January 1st, 1922, she received the Holy Sacrament. She later noted, I had given up practicing my Jewish religion when I was a 14-year-old girl, and did not begin to feel Jewish again until I had returned to God. From this moment on, she was continually aware that she belonged to Christ, not only spiritually, but also through her blood. After her baptism, she had desired to become a Carmelite. She was directed to wait. In 1930, 
she wrote these remarkable and prophetic words. Every time I feel my own powerlessness and inability to influence people directly, I become more keenly aware of the necessity of my own holocaust. She was finally allowed to enter the Carmelites in Cologne in 1934, receiving the name of Sister Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. She understood as being integral to her vocation that she must intercede to God for her people. This indeed is what God was calling her to do. Being in danger in Germany, she was sent for safety to the Carmelite convent in Echt. However, on August 2nd, 1942, while she was in the chapel with the other sisters, the Gestapo came for her. It was an act of retaliation by the Nazi party because the Dutch Roman Catholic bishops protested against the deportations and the slaughter of the Jews. Thus, Edith, along with many like her, was arrested for being Catholic of Jewish descent. Together with her sister Rosa, who had also converted and was serving at the Echt convent, they were destined to Auschwitz concentration camp. Her last words to be heard in Echt were addressed to Rosa. Come, she said, we are going for our people. She was keenly aware that she was to offer her death in union with Christ for her people. She died in the gas chambers of the concentration camp, and her memorial is celebrated August 9th. A daughter of Israel, she was ever faithful to Christ crucified and to her own people.